which is uh, Dr. Yuxel. She is Associate Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology at the Reproductive Genetics Center in Istanbul. And her oral presentation concerns the clinical and morphokinetic factors indicating a risk of pregnancy loss after a euploid embryo transfer. Please you start your presentation, Dr. Luxo. Hi, everyone. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you for giving me the opportunity to discuss our research on the clinical and morphokinetic factors indicating a risk of pregnancy loss after a euploid embryo transfer. Uh, firstly, I have no financial disclosures. As we all know, the most common reason for first trimester pregnancy losses is the chromosomal abnormalities. However, the factors that cause a pregnancy loss after a euclid embryo transfer are not fully understood. Clinicians often encounter difficulty in explaining to the patient when pregnancy loss occurs following a euclid embryo transfer after controlling for all confounding factors that are known to cause a pregnancy loss. Therefore, our aim in the study was to determine the clinical and embryological factors indicating a risk of pregnancy loss after a single euclid embryo transfer. In the study, which we performed as a single center retrospective cohort study as a study design, we evaluated the pregnancy results of all euclid embryos tested with next generation sequencing um, at, in Istanbul Memorial Hospital between January 20, 2017 and March 2020. All uterine anatomical abnormalities and endocrine disorders were controlled and treated prior to single frozen thought embryo transfer. Only the cases resulting in pregnancy and the cases younger than 43 years were included in the study. The cases were analyzed under three groups according to pregnancy outcomes. Biochemical pregnancy losses, which was defined as a positive beta-HCG that declined spontaneously. Clinical pregnancy losses, which was defined as a pregnancy loss after the visualization of the inter interuterine gestational sac. And LIBORT, which was defined as a LIBORN baby after 24 weeks of gestation. Clinical and embryological parameters were compared among these groups. Furthermore, available morphokinetic parameters of 523 euclid embryos were also evaluated. 1,492 pregnancies were obtained as a result of the transfer of 2,041 single euclid embryos within the specified time. The total biochemical pregnancy rate was 73.1% uh, and the rates of biochemical pregnancy losses and clinical losses were 9.7 and 11.4% respectively. The LIBOR rate was 58.5%. When we evaluated all euclid pregnancy losses according to PGTA indications, the history of recurrent pregnancy losses, which was defined as a history of two or more failed pregnancies, had the highest rate of total pregnancy loss compared to the other groups. I'd like to underline this slide a bit more because, as we know, identifiable causes for the current pregnancy losses fail to account for a large amount of cases. And here we see that even following a euclid embryo transfer, after controlling and treating of well-known causes of recurrent pregnancy loss, the scarage rate is still higher than expected. Therefore, we believe this situation suggests that there are still some factors that cannot be explained in a significant amount of cases. When patient characteristics and pregnancy outcomes were evaluated, it was seen that the baseline demographic characteristics of the study cohort, including age, AMH, duration of infertility, and the diagnosis of infertility were not different among groups. However, BMI values were significantly higher in clinical pregnancy loss group compared to the LIBORT. In addition, the number of previous unsuccessful frozen embryo transfer cycles were significantly lower in the LIBORT group when compared to both pregnancy loss groups. Similarly, the presence of severe endometriosis was significantly lower in LIBORT group when compared to both pregnancy loss groups. The type of endometrial preparation before frozen embryo transfer also differed between groups. The natural cycle had the highest percentage in the LIBORT group when compared to the other groups. In addition, the rate of artificial cycles was higher in the clinical pregnancy loss group when compared to biochemical losses. 
The overall evaluation of pregnancy results in artificial and natural cycles also revealed a significant increase in miscarriage rates in artificial cycles. As we know, unlike natural cycles in which the endometrium is prepared with endogen hormones from a developing follicle, in artificial cycles, the endometrium is prepared with exogen, estradiol, and progesterone. Although the controversy on this issue still exists, there are some reports in the literature that support our finding, and in these reports, suboptimal hormone levels have been blamed for the higher miscarriage rates in artificial cycles. Uh, when we evaluated the embryo grades, which were graded according to Gardner's blastocyst grading system, in the LIBORG group, we found that top quality embryos constituted the highest percentage, which was statistically significant. Positive pregnancy rates were found to be higher when the transfer was performed with top quality embryos. And we believe this emphasizes that euploidy is not the only factor in preventing miscarriages, but the embryo grade is also an important factor to be remembered. The morphokinetic parameters of 523 euplate embryos in which the time-lapse imaging was used have also been analyzed according to pregnancy outcomes. However, the time to reach each morphokinetic stage was not different among the three groups. Moreover, the presence of uneven blastomere sizes and the direct or reverse cleavage were not different among the three groups. On the other hand, when compared to total pregnancy loss group, namely when biochemical and clinical miscarriages were grouped together, it was observed a significantly lower rate of uneven blastomeres in the LIBORG group. Well, as we all know, uneven blastomere sizes during the embryo development have been associated with unemployees in various studies. However, in this study, we observed that even in euplate embryos, the presence of uneven blastomeres may be an indication of improper mitosis and may cause uneven distribution of cell down material and therefore may affect pregnancy results. After evaluating all factors in the univariate analysis, the factors that were found to be statistically different have been additionally evaluated by backward step logistic regression analysis. As a result, the type of endometrial preparation, the presence of uneven blastomeres, the embryo grades, and the number of previous unsuccessful frozen embryo transfer cycles were defined as risk factors indicating a risk of pregnancy loss after euplate embryo transfer. When pregnancy loss occurs following a euplate embryo transfer after controlling for all anatomical and endocrine disorders that can cause pregnancy loss, explaining its reasons to the patients is often one of the biggest challenges for clinicians. When such a situation is encountered, high BMI values, the presence of severe endometriosis, and the history of a pregnancy loss should be taken into consideration. However, according to the results of our study, it was revealed that the type of endometrial preparation, the presence of uneven blastomeres, the embryo grade, and the number of previous unsuccessful frozen embryo transfer cycles are the most important factors that may impact pregnancy outcomes following euploid embryo transfers. Thank you for listening to me. And I would like to conclude my presentation with a picture of our IVF team, which was taken before the pandemic. And for sure, we all hope to see those days again soon. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Yuxon, for your clear presentation. Thank you. There's a question from the audience. Uh, how do you schedule, plan your embryo transfer in a natural cycle? Uh, well, thank you for that question. Um, first, when we... Uh, can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Uh, well, we first do an ultrasonographic examination on the second day of menstruation uh, to rule out any uh, ovarian cysts or any uterine abnormalities. Uh, and then uh, if the patient is ovulatory, um, we repeat the ultrasound on day 10 or day 11, uh, depending on the menstrual cycle size. And we try to see the presence of a dominant follicle. And after that, um, when we see a dominant follicle of 15 millimeters, we, we start to measure the hormone levels of estrogen and also serum LH levels. And we try to um, find the day of LH surge. Uh, the LH surge is defined in our cl clinic as over 15 international units. 
And after we see that uh, LH surge, we do uh, a trigger injection with uh, recombinant HCG. And uh, six days after that, we do the blastocyst transfer. In a summary. Okay. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> And uh, the next question is, uh, well, that's a comparison with the previous uh, presentation. Uh, Pinka out loud, does your protocol algorithm could integrate with an artificial intelligence such as that of the previous presentation, Erika? Yes, it's com combined, could it be done that way? I guess that's the question. Well, uh, we are currently started to use uh, AI systems in our uh, clinic, but of course, um, I cannot give an exact data about it because uh, currently we our data showed that there was no difference in terms of uh, pregnancy outcome with the time lapse imaging. But we will also see if AI will add any value uh, over that. Uh, we don't use Erica, it's something else we, we are currently using. Uh, we are accumulating the data and maybe um, a few uh, months later, we may publish that results too. Okay, we're waiting for that. Mm -hmm. um, question from my side, I would expect that female age is also on a clinical determinant that impacts on pregnancy outcome. It didn't mm -hmm. show up. Um, can you elaborate on that? Yes, true. Um, but uh, as you may have seen, we uh, had a threshold like uh, 43 mm -hmm. years of age, because in uh, our uh, another study, we have shown that over the age of 43, even the uh, embryo is euplate, even the endometrium uh, is uh, good, the pregnancy rates uh, are, short, um, are lower than normal. So in below the age of 43, the, there is no difference between the uh, groups of ages. Okay, and um, one other question. Uh, were patients in your research counseled for PGTA versus natural conception? Uh, Can I have the question again, please? Were patients counseled for PGTA versus uh, natural conception? Well, you mentioned that, that you, um, um, more specific question is maybe that you mentioned that PGTA reduces uh, time to pregnancy. Yes, uh, we did, did, did you see that in the results as well? Yes, uh, I have shown that we have um, different indications for PGTA and also reducing time to pregnancy was one of those uh, indications. And in that group, we had uh, a 17 percent of miscarriages uh, with euploid transfers. Uh, as far as I remember, it was um, 304, uh, 340 patients was uh, indicated for time to pregnancy. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Yuxo, for answering these questions. Thank you. Um,